Good evening and welcome to the October 5th, 2015 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please call the roll? Ms. Aguas? Mr. Bealy? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. And Mr. Wood? Here. Thank you. I'll just note that we have our full complement of voting members this evening, and Mr. Bealy will be a non-voting participant. Next item is approval of minutes from the September 14, 2015 meeting. Motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. Quick housekeeping note. Item number five on our agenda, Fortune Estates, has been tabled at the request of the applicant. Item number four on the agenda this evening, Bell Family requests final subdivision review for a four-lot conservation subdivision titled Bell Family Subdivision. Assessor's map R30, lot six. Okay. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as board members will recall, this saw this item at your last meeting in which it received preliminary approval. This is for, as you just noted, a four-lot subdivision in the RF, or Rural and Farming District, required to go through our conservation subdivision design, um, which the board uh, found uh, acceptable at the preliminary um, phase. There, and there, as, it, as it's mentioned, they're before you for final review. Staff reviewed the plans, and at this point, really, the uh, remaining question has to do, or as related to the future uses of the open space, there's been some ongoing discussions with the applicant and, and their, uh, what they desire to see happen with the open spaces, and so um, just a discussion with the board to be sure that they're meeting the allowances under Section 7A, F of the ordinance. With that, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to the applicant. Great. Uh, thank you. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Silo Solutions. I'm joined tonight by Bruce Bell and his sister. Um, we're dealing with a 10.38 acre subdivision of which 5.43 acres uh, is open space. So the, the big question that has come up is the use of the open space. Um, the lots are divided up so that what I'm tracing, all this area up in here is the open space. And from this aerial, it may be hard to see, but this light green area is open field. It's an area that has been hayed historically um, since they've had the property. And the treed area is proposed for passive recreation, maybe some trails, but it's it's not meant to be developed. It's going to remain treed. So, since haying is a agricultural use, there are five standards under <coughs> Section 7A, uh, letter F, that we need to address. Um, one of them is that open space may not intermingle with the existing lots. As you can see here, it's the open space is all to the back, the rear of the proposed lots. Uh, specific agricultural activities require planning board approval under this um, section of the ordinance. So what we're proposing to use is the open field to be continue to be hay. We're talking once, maybe twice a year, no more than that. No access is allowed over residential lots to the open space. You may recall that we talked about there was a gravel drive access off of Beechridge Road. That's how they accessed the land to continue to hay it. Um, that's something that we requested not be blocked off so that they could continue to, to hay the, the fields. Um, 4D, size and location of buildings in the open space. We are proposing no buildings in the open space. It's to remain as is. And finally, the ownership of the open space. And what we're proposing, and we'll address this with notes and deeds, is that each of the lots, A, B, C, and D, will have joint ownership of the open space. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Roger, would you like to start off? Um, well, I, I 
I think um, you've answered you know, some of the primary uh, questions. Um, one of the other things that staff had was uh, about the um, uh, notating where the open spaces were, you know, like the stakes and things like that. Now, as I understand, when I read the material, it sounds like every place is an angle, you're going to have a stake. Right. So the issue with that was taking places where there was wetlands that would be, you know, the buffers would encroach on the lot. So the way this subdivision was designed and laid out, there are no none of the buffers encroach on the lots. Um, some other lot, some other previous conservation subdivisions, you'd see that some of those buffers would cut into the building envelope. In this case, all the property lines are outside of the buffers. So with that, we don't believe that there's any need. To, to stake for the buffers because they're all outside the building envelopes anyway. And I imagine it would be in the deeds of each of uh, the parcels where this all this open space is and everything as well. Right? Correct. Yeah. Um, I don't really have any further questions. Thanks. Nick? <coughs> did, did you say that you're going to continue haying the field? Correct. And all four of these lots are going to be part owner in the open space, correct? Correct. Who's going to get the benefit of the haying of the field? That's, I mean, if, if one of these lots is sold off, are you splitting the, the money out of that field? or I mean, if, how is it open space if if you're continuing to use it to, for monetary gain, would be my guess. But, you know. That's a good question. <clears throat> Bruce Bell, 13 West Beach Ridge Road. At my age, that field has been has been uh, mowed every year and sometimes twice a year. The benefit of the hay goes to the family because there are people within the family that also raise animals, okay? And we also have friends in the neighborhood that also have used some of the hay out of the field. So those years where it is so wet that we can't harvest down in the wetlands, down in the real wetland areas, we just bush hog those areas just to keep them open because we like the visibility of the open space. Thank you. I don't, I don't have any further, further questions here. I think, um, as you may have indicated, the board will have to discuss whether or not we consider that open space at that point. Whether it's a, but it, I'm fine with what I'm seeing right now. Sure. Thanks. Ron? Well, Nick, first, just asked a question that was foremost on my mind also. Thank you, Nick. Um, we, one of the notes from staff was that uh, the need for plan notes 10, 13, and 14, why were they on there? Okay. So the town has a set of standard notes, and one of the previous um, comments was, please add all the standard notes to the plan. So without even reading them, we <laughs> threw them on there, not <laughs> realizing. Them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and we've talked about the no disturb setback, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the fire department's okay with your answer to the question? Yeah, so there is a dry hydrant that's about 900 feet up West Beach Ridge Road. Um, we were looking for wet hydrants. We didn't include the dry hydrant, but there is one on West Beach Ridge Road. I think I'm, I'm, like I said, Nick, Nick sort of hit the nail on the head for me, so I'm okay. Thank you, Ron. Looks like our staff is doing just, some... Just in, just in case there's an ordinance checking for us, but in the meantime, John? I'm fine. Just might want to check on your standard notes before you print them next time. <laughs> so I can come back and bite your picture. You <laughs> and it did. <laughs> I'm all set other than that. <laughs> Mike? Thank you, Tori. Um, on Lot C, how do you how do you see Lot C being developed? I'm, I'm just curious as to how it it kind of chokes off a little bit, and then you have several test pits as you move towards the back of the building or the back of the lot, rather. And then I see where you've uh, demarcated where the proposed well is going to go. Yeah. So. This is not the first draft of this plan. It was done many times, and what happened is test pits were dug multiple times. So when we had passing test pits, we just kept them on the plan to give them options for where to place the house. But what we envision is that a, a long driveway coming up here, 
um, with a home probably in this area with a wheat field in the back and potentially a well down there. That's not saying that things could shift around and that well could move to the front. If we don't use that, then the well radius comes down in this area, leaves that open for a well. I see. So the, so the well can actually, you know, change dramatically from its... It could. It, it just needs to be 100 feet from where we choose to put the septic. Okay. And uh, this, uh, when we talk about the subdivision, it's, it's lots A, B, C, and D. Correct. And, and then when we talk about, you know, hay in the field, um, Mr. Bell spoke about the benefit going to the family. So what are we talking, what, what family are we talking about? Are we talking about? The Bell family. The and Bell the, family. The lots are being divided up for his sisters. Oh, so it's all going to be owned by family members. Oh, and it's a big yeah. and if, there's, is, if there's a transfer in ownership, will, will there be a part of the deeds, if you will, that, uh, that uh, illustrate this ownership? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. It looks pretty straightforward to me. Thank you, Corey. Thanks, Ron. Just as a follow-up of that, if it does get sold to someone outside of the family, I would hope that the Bells would let the family know that they do, you know, do the area uh, in haying. Uh, it, it, it's, it's required as part of that Section 4A to be in the deed to describe what the use is. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Jay, did you have anything you wanted to? Uh, no, I just know that the, I guess I was just um, opening up to that section 7A because I know uh, Mr. McGee asked a question about the agricultural use and, um, you know, being sure that was part of the permissible open space. A and that was, um, as has been referenced already, under section 7, the conservation subdivision design, subsection F, talks about the open space that you need to have the 15%, and it goes on further. Um, it really spells out three different ways the open space can be used. The first one it talks about is for agricultural activities, and uh, the applicant has sort of addressed those issues. Staff has the uh, uh, benefit of prior conversations leading into this meeting to have an indication of where they were headed with these, and we're fairly comfortable they've addressed the five standards uh, set forth. Um, the next provision is about wetlands and forest land conservation, which is a typical open space we see, which is that passive recreation area they talked about, basically the, the existing trees that we might put a trail or two through. And then the third one um, really talks about more active recreational facilities, um, you know, should a subdivision ever come along that wants a golf course or something like to that effect. So um, just wanted to address okay. Mr. McGee's question. Um, and so depending on where staff, uh, the board winds up staff did draft a motion with some conditions and the conditions sort of address um, uh, clear, clearing up the uh, the notes on the plan. Um, we just wanted to be sure the board was comfortable with that ag agriculture activity before we sort of move forward with anything. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Um, it is helpful to have that quick review of the, of the open space language and it is unusual for us to see open space that's Act, actual active agricultural use, um, not typical of most of the most of the uh, subdivisions that we see. So, uh, the, as the applicant has, I think, laid out pretty clearly. <coughs> excuse me. The, um, the those conditions appear to be met here pretty clearly, and it sounds like there will be <coughs> there clearly are provisions uh, requiring that this be included in the deed, and so that'll all be covered for future ownership transfers. Um, I don't really have anything else to add. Um, I'd like to thank the applicant and, and uh, the owners for being responsive and patient during this process. And um, as I think I said last time, a couple of us said last time, um, you know, we've got a couple of funky looking lots, but I think we, we got them to where they work and um, I think we've, we've covered all the other bases. So uh, unless anyone else on the board has anything else to add at this point, um, I would like to uh, put this motion on the table. I move to approve the application of Bell Family Heirs presented by Northeast Civil Solutions under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan of Bell Family Subdivision with the following findings and conditions. The applicant proposes a four-lot residential subdivision with access off of West, <coughs> excuse me, off of West Beach Ridge Road. The residential subdivision is located within the Rural Farming District, RF, and the Stream Protection Overlay District and has been designed in accordance with the Conservation Subdivision Design Standards. 
the planning board finds that the subdivision meets the conservation subdivision design standards with an excess of 50% open space to accommodate the preservation of wetlands and agricultural uses and that the residential lots are designed to meet the space and bulk regulations of Section 7A. In addition, the Planning Board finds that the subdivision meets Section 4 and 6 of the subdivision ordinance, ensuring that the development meets minimum standards for the protection of public health, safety, and welfare. And the following conditions. Number one, the subdivision shall be developed <coughs> in accordance with the subdivision plans titled Four Lot Subdiv Conservation Subdivision, Bell Family Subdivision, prepared by Ross Boundary Surveys dated August 10, 2015, and revised September 21, 2015, and the Site Plan Bell Family Subdivision, prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions dated September 21, 2015. Prior to signing the plan, the plan set shall be revised to address plan notes and provisions related to the uses of the open space as agreed during the, del the deliberation as well as other notes addressed in planning staff's memo. That was all just one condition. <laughs> Number two, prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall pay the required traffic impact fee. Number three, prior to the issuance of a building permit for each lot, a grading and drainage plan shall be prepared for review and approval by the town engineer. Number four, Prior to issuance of a building permit for each lot, a $250 recreation contribution fee shall be paid. And number five, prior to the issuance of the first building permit, the deed restriction in conformance with sections 7A, F4, and 5 of the zoning ordinance related to open space uses shall be established for the subdivision lots. That's the motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank Great. you. Good Thank luck. you. <laughs> Dimension item number five was tabled. Item number six, Maine Family Eye Care requests a site plan review for 370 U.S. <coughs> Route 1, Assessor's Map U39, Lot 44. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's see. As you just noted, this applicant is before you for redevelopment of a property at 370 U.S. Route 1. The parcel is in the B3 zone and also is encumbered by Stream Protection District. Uh, board members will recall, uh, let's see, this item was before you first as a sketch plan in July <coughs> and a, its first formal application review back in September. Um, at this point, having been through um, the board's comments at the last meeting, the applicant has revised their plans uh, to address some of the issues in terms of internal circulation and curb cuts at the site are the, are the biggest changes. You'll have staff comments to that effect. Um, we also will have received comments from Goral Palmer, our uh, peer review traffic engineer, as well as Woodard and Kern. Civil engineer. I'd also just note that Susan Auglis, who can't be with here, us here tonight, did send have a letter with some comments that are part of the record. Um, she had questions uh, remained about the, uh, the architectural detailing of the building. Um, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And I will hand it off to the applicant's representative. Sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Vafiatis, and I'm here on behalf of a uh, uh, Future Visions Realty and also Maine Family Eye Care. And uh, I'm here with Kevin Downing of Garen Durgeon Associates. And uh, we are here tonight for a final site plan review uh, with the hopes uh, that uh, we might be able to uh, maybe squeak out a conditional approval. Um, the last time we were here, we, we, we took your comments uh, into consideration and um, I'd like to talk about a few of the site related co uh, components of that and then I'll turn it over to Kevin for. Uh, maybe expounding on those a little bit, but um, we previously, as Jay referenced, we had two entrances, and we've now uh, actually we had one entrance and two exits, so to speak. We've now proposed to close that far right-hand turn only exit um, and keep all the traffic coming in and out out of one exit. That sort of that circumvents anyone trying to make a left-hand turn out of the site and going over the running over the island or going at a long diagonal across there. 
Um, since then, the plans you have show an 18-foot access way right here. Um, since then, we've sort of talked with the town and the traffic engineer, and uh, we're proposing we're going to make that 20 feet by adding another foot. We're going to squeeze another foot off between the road, and also we're going to grab another foot next to the building to sort of share uh, that extra space. Um, and as Jay may have already mentioned, uh, that it will require a waiver for the 15-foot uh, landscape uh, island between uh, development and uh, Route 1. Uh, but we do feel that that's the best design sort of to allow for snow plow removal, sort of ease and people going back and forth, you know, should two cars hit, uh, well, hopefully not hit, but uh, should two cars pass simultaneously in front of the building. Uh, and also we, we had a few board comments about sort of a parking space that was so close to um, right turning traffic coming in from the uh, the northbound lane, and we've actually squeezed that back down away from the site, sort of give it a little more room to breathe, and any vehicles coming in and out of here, a little extra room there. And uh, I think that is sort of the majority of the site changes. Um, part of the parking sort of shifting is that we've grabbed more green space uh, along this stream bank edge out here, and uh, we've maintained the same setback that we previously had on this side. And if there's any questions on site or stormwater, I'd be happy to take those now or I can turn it over to Kevin and we can get to the landscaping. And yeah, I, think we'll, I think we'll listen to the whole presentation oh. and do it all at once. Thank you. Kevin Downing from Garan Turgeon Architects. Uh, as Jason has mentioned, we revised the site uh, quite a bit. Uh, as he mentioned, there's now only one curb cut. The internal circulation uh, is much, much more clear. Um, that front access aisle, we propose to have that 20 feet, not 18. Uh, we did move the sign as part of our <coughs> site redesign. We couldn't keep the sign where we had it before, so you'll notice the sign has been relocated. It still uh, encroaches over the typical 15 feet off the uh, Right of, or the right-of-way or property line by five feet. You guys allow for that in your uh, ordinance as long as the height is also reduced. Uh, and we've accounted for that in the plans. It should be fairly clear on the site, uh, uh, sorry, on the sign drawings. Um, there was a comment about the uh, landscaping on the Route 1 side of the dumpster enclosure and whether or not that should uh, include more vertical massing to further screen it. We are proposing a fence. Uh, currently, we do show herbaceous material right there, perennials. Uh, although we don't call it out, we do recognize that there is going to be some snow stacked there from time to time. We're not, we don't plan to store snow there, but there certainly is going to be some piling up there. Um, with that in mind, anything that any sort of plant with woody plant material, uh, a typical shrub or something, will likely just get destroyed. Um, that being said, there certainly is an opportunity to have extend this, what I've kind of done along Route 1, maybe extend that so it's just kind of uh, takes into, con into consideration this tree here. That may also help provide a little more screening if the uh, Perennials are not, uh, if you guys don't uh, feel that the perennials are doing a good enough job screening that. Again, the perennials that we do have there are large grasses as well. They ultimately will be one and a half feet wide by about five feet tall, a nor uh, northern switchgrass. Um, There were several comments also about the architecture, I've kind of gone round and round on that. Um, we were advised to uh, describe modifications made and how the proposal seeks to add visual interest and strengthen the relationship of the structure within the site and nearby structures. Uh, we've added parapets and floor to ceiling windows at the corners to help visually establish that there are two separate units. Uh, we feel the consistency of the window rhythms and facade materials across the Route 1 facade establishes the building as a whole. Uh, wall and directional signage will help drivers and pedestrians navigate the site. And with respect to strengthening the relationship to nearby structures, uh, point, 
I would point to south on Route 1 to 383 Route 1, which has similar gray siding, old white trim, stone base in certain areas. Uh, and then even on the same side of the road, Tim Hortons um, has uh, white trim, storefront windows and doors, and stone base. Uh, the, the one thing we are missing, uh, again, is the pitch group. Is that the uh, architectural? Yes, sorry. Could you put that up, please? Um, we certainly uh, appreciate the board's comments and recommendations, and I think we've uh, tried to uh, demonstrate that we've taken those to heart and made changes. With respect to Board Member Augustus' slippery slope argument, uh, I guess I don't feel necessarily that we're getting away with something, nor that approval would lead to an invitation to disregard the guidelines. Uh, we applied the guidelines to a site in a structure with unique design parameters, and so while in the opinion of some we've not met the letter of the law interpretation of the guidelines, we feel the spirit of the guidelines has been met. Ultimately, we feel dem uh, demonstrated. Sorry. Ultimately, we feel we've demonstrated a legitimate, practical commitment to the board's recommendations and the town's design guidelines, and that the merits of the improved site and renovated structure are straightforward. At this time, we would like to thank the planning board and staff for their assistance throughout the process. And acknowledging the previously established conditions of approval, we respectfully request final site plan approval for Maine Family Eye Care's application uh, for the parcel at 370 Route 1. Thank you, and I'll take any questions right now. Thank you. Ron, would you like to go first? No, I'll take <coughs> somebody else. I'm still working on a couple of things. Thank you. John, how about you? All right, just a couple things. Uh, and the snow storage thing, which is a question of mine. And have they dealt with the grading in the back of the building? Have they given you sufficient data on that as far as elevations? And we haven't seen any detail to that effect yet. That's, I think, something that could typically be handled as part of a construction set um, and condition if the board were so inclined. Thank okay. you. That's um, all right. That's all right. I'd, so. That's where I was headed with that. Okay. The other one was the paved drain system. I looked at that, and that's pretty interesting. Obviously, winter sanding is going to be an issue. As far as stormwater management agreement with the town, how does the town deal with it if they don't vacuum the system out at whatever time it takes when the system fails? How does the town deal with that? Well, fortunately, we've had compliance in the time that we've had our ordinance in, in effect. Um, but the ordinance does provide for uh, it would be a, a typical violation. So um, we would first try to reach out and work with the applicant to get compliance. Uh, if barring that, there would be the potential for fining. Uh, okay. Yep. So the applicant understands that this system is going to have to get vacuumed out at some point if they're doing winter sanding. Uh, yes, and that, that's part of a, a maintenance plan that's put in place um, that's given to the to the applicant um, at the time, and they usually hire a company that'll come in. Uh, these paved drain systems are actually designed to really avoid any kind of complications from that. If you look at the detail, if you want to get real technical, um, there, there's a lot of stone under there with not a real choke layer. Mm -hmm. And so what we're finding is with applications is that they can go three to four years without the vacuum jet right. truck. Um, but we would still recommend every year annual you know bring the truck in look it over mm -hmm. um, inspect it for any kind of areas that pond maybe when it's raining and uh, I mentioned, carry that out. I mentioned Jay before I didn't like the pervious pavement because that's going to clog up faster than this system. Yes. So yeah. I just want to make sure they understood that. Where are we with the DEP? Uh, the DEP will just be a, uh, a permit by rule so typically those are sent in and if you don't hear anything you're all good to go and it's a 14 day trial a 14 day waiting period from the day that you mail it in um, so what we were actually waiting for was final approval to know that we could time everything all together um, conditional approval send the permit in come up with the construction the, the mylars to bring into the town which will show uh, more detailed grading in the back um, in which case the town will review it the permit will be in come back we're all set to go and uh, 
we'll be ready to you know put a shovel in the ground if we get to that point. Okay, so the water district is fine, the sanitary district. I'm sure that's just a matter of a letter or a meeting. Uh, and I'm okay with the design. I think I'm Susan's going to probably shoot me for saying that, but I'm okay with the design and the waiver on the 15-foot buffer. I have no issue with that as far as balancing out that to the safety of the the roadway and the uh, parking just, area. Just so the board knows, the sewer department has already come back with a willingness to serve letter and the water department, uh, you have to wait 21 days. I believe we sent that 18 days ago, so that should be within this week coming in. So it should be all set. I don't anticipate a 99.99% chance of getting that back positively. So. I'm okay. Did I cover enough for you? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> um, and I'll jump the line here just briefly on uh, just to pick up on the architecture comment. Um, I, too, uh, am satisfied with, with where you are on architecture. Um, you know, I think for me, I, set, I sort of keep reminding myself what we're starting with, and <laughs> you can flip that over for, for uh, illustration we, purposes. We this time. Right. <laughs> and I think you were well served by including that in, in, the, in your material, <laughs> uh, even though most of us drive by it pretty regularly. Um, I, I think you've been responsive and have made a strong uh, effort to to comply with the, the letter and spirit of the of the regulation of the standards rather um, and I do think that it's not only a significant improvement but that it that it is uh, that it does fit in along route one in a, in a positive way um, architecture by its nature is highly subjective <laughs> and we sometimes do get into some uh, differences of opinion here and, and I'll be uh, anxious to hear how others on the board feel about it. Um, I've already heard from Mr. DuPont, but, um, and I, I respect Ms. Douglas a lot, and she's taught me a lot about landscape and architecture and, and a lot of other things on this board, uh, but I guess I would just respectfully disagree with her on, on, on that, on this particular uh, item, and I'm confident that um, we've had other, we've had other instances where there have been concerns about potentially setting a, a uh, bad precedent, and I think with the process we have in place and the process we've had in this in this case, um, that I, that's not a, a big concern for me. So, um, with that, I'll <coughs> hand it off to. Uh, I'll have other other comments here when we wrap up, but just wanted to sort of put that out there. Mike, would you like to? Yeah, but um, would it? Um, I don't have um, Miss Douglas's notes. Are they? Are they something that you can read into the record? Just sure. Would that be okay, Mr. Chairman? Sure, absolutely. Okay. This is an email from Susan Douglas to my attention through email, Wednesday, September the 30th, 2015. Good morning, Jay. Just FYI, I'll be out of town on 10-5 and therefore unable to attend the board meeting that evening. I would, however, like to offer a comment on the 10-5 Agenda Item 6, Main Family Eye Care. I am still uncomfortable with the architectural design of the building's exterior. I have reread the architectural chapter of the design standards, see staff comments on Main Eye Care, Section L, and find it rather vague, and find it a rather vague section with which we have precious little experience. I'm not sure that we, the board, fully understand just how this chapter may be interpreted. I'm not sure the applicant understands just how this chapter may be interpreted. With this in mind, I would like to suggest a peer review of the architecture being suggested for Maine Family Eye Care. I know that as a planning board, we want to encourage and assist any improvement to a site that is presently substandard. But I feel we need to be sure we exercise our role as planners, in quotations, and not let a rehab put us, put us in a position where we begin to hear if they can do that, so can I. That would be uh, the end of effective design standards. Thank you, Jay. Please share with the planning board members. Sincerely, Susan Alders. Okay. Thank you for that. Well, uh, I would echo the chairman's uh, comments on the um, on the efforts that you've made uh, to the building. I know. It, I think it's been at least three, four meetings where you've um, you've heard some pretty specific criticisms, and I think you've um, held your head high and turned around and come back with a better product each time, and I think this product is uh, is quite exceptional, really, given what you started with. 
On the other hand, I understand what Ms. Argos is saying also. Just because we're starting with a substandard situation, we're not going to necessarily reduce, you know, what our uh, standards might be or what our efforts um, might, uh, might see ourselves getting to. And I think, I, I think the example, if you could flip it back around to your uh, – to your effort there, I think that that shows that um, you have worked very hard to uh, meet the intent and in, uh, of the guidelines and um, uh, the, of the uh, architectural guidelines, and I'm I'm pretty satisfied with it. There's been a lot of little details that have been added over the last several weeks that I think uh, goes a long way to make that building um, quite acceptable along Route One. And uh, I think most of us would like a pitched roof, certainly, but we understand that it's it's really impractical in this sense. So. Um, I'm, uh, I'm in favor of it. And the landscape seems very robust. I'm not um, an expert on, you know, species, et cetera, et cetera, but I'll trust that uh, you've done all your homework in that regard. Uh, I'm happy with the 15-foot waiver. Uh, no issues there. Um, it appears that the parking, uh, amount of parking might be tight. Uh, did you run numbers, and can you tell me, like, where you're at with that? Certainly. Uh, for main family care, the, uh, their square footage will require uh, 15 parking spaces. Ultimate uh, total parking spaces, we have 25. Uh, so that leaves 10 remaining for the future tenant. Uh, and I believe they have just under 13 or under 1,400 square feet, 1,600 square feet, uh, which leaves them six per 1,000 square feet. Um, most uses call for four per 1,000 square feet, so it, it's a small uh, leased space, uh, so it does only have a couple, um, 10 parking spaces. That being said, uh, it meets nearly every uh, use requirement. And uh, how many employees are expected to work here at Main IKEA? Hmm. Four employees. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I wish I wish the site plan uh, allowed me to uh, to say that should in the future you need more parking, you can create it. But I'm thinking you've probably maxed everything out. Oh, yes, we've had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the sign looks great. Um, I don't see, and I might be missing it, but I don't see where you talked about the uh, dumpster location, but I didn't see it on my plan. I might be missing it. But. Uh. Is it the 10 by 10? The dumpster location now is at the far end of uh, the parking lot to the north. Okay. And you're going to fence that in? That's correct. There's a dumpster enclosure detail, I believe, on uh, one of the detail sheets. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't think I have anything else. Um, I like the one ingress, egress um, sign. I think you did a great job with the building. And um, I'm in favor of final approval tonight with whatever conditions the uh, the board sees fit. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, the fire, fire department looked at this and they're okay with what they're seeing? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I, I agree with my colleagues. I think the architecture, um, and I was the one that threw out the pain road comment last, last uh, three weeks ago, and I understand that, but I think uh, the what you've done here with the textures on the siding. Uh, it looks like you've gone to a, you know, a shingle and a little bit more architectural detail, yep. uh, including the, the rock and the, the windows. It does help. It helps a lot. And so uh, I think you've definitely uh, made the best out of uh, you know, the situation you were handed, and I applaud you for the efforts. You did a good job. Um, perfectly fine with what I'm looking at. So good job. We've got, uh, got little else. I'm okay with your waiver request. Um, Maybe I mis misheard him, but you don't have DEP permits in hand yet? That's correct. Yeah, it's a, it's a permit by rule, so um, you actually don't get the permit. You just fill it out, send it in, and then when you don't hear anything, you're good to go. You have 14 days. So they don't actually respond to you officially about that, unless they have a problem, in which case we'd know within 14 days. So I think maybe we can structure it that. We send the permit in tomorrow. And uh, you can't break ground and, or pull out a. I'm sure Jay has a way of handling that in his final approval notes. Nick, Nick, if you, you mind. 
Why didn't you do that before? Because I don't know what comes first, the horse or the cart, but why wasn't that done? So we, we held off on that, waiting for if there were any other comments that would change the site layout or anything, because we send a site plan in with the, with the permit, and we're so close. If there were a situation where we had to go in uh, to the setback or, or to fix something, that uh, we're so close to that stream setback that we want to wait until our site plan is set for final approval, and then we send it in. It's not, it's not like a stormwater permit where the, the review is, is similar to your review. It's usually it's a, it's a check on the box. I think that's what folks might be thinking of is the stormwater yeah. review, which we typically <coughs> wait for before we issue final approval. Thank yeah. you. If I, if I might, Mr. Chair, um, sure. just so the board and folks um, in the audience know, the, the town does receive when an applicant does submit a, a permit by rule application to DEP, our code office is actually um, receives a copy of that, prints off a copy, and puts it in a notebook. So we are familiar when those are submitted. Um, but yes, you're, you're, you're spot on. They're, they're quite a different animal than a stormwater permit or um, the sort of typical permit that uh, would potentially change the layout or landscape. Um, really, they're just looking at this point is to, is the applicant disturbing within the 25 foot of the stream, which would trigger additional review, which they're not doing here. And then really what they're looking at is what's that extent of disturbance between the 25 foot setback and 75 foot setback to the stream. Um, and they're um, basically signing off on the fact that you're doing that. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. I'm all done. Okay. Roger. Uh, thank you. <coughs> um, I, uh, I agree with my colleagues on all their comments. Um, uh, this is a very challenging piece of property, and I think you've done a very good job accommodating all our concerns. Um, and I, I think the uh, – I have no problem with the architecture at all. Um, in fact, I don't know whether I should say this or not, but when I first saw it, it almost gave uh, – it appeared to be a little bit of uh, the Mercedes dealership the color scheme and all that, you know, which is okay. That's right. Uh, but um, no, I think uh, I think it's a, a vast improvement. Uh, I know for years um, people often wondered what would ever go in there, you know, because of the restrictions, the limitations of the, of the the parcel and everything. And so I think you've done a terrific job and and uh, accommodating all our concerns. So good luck. And uh, I'm just kind of curious, what's the any timeline for getting anything started, uh, assuming everything gets approved? Yeah, hopefully this fall, I, I believe, yeah. Okay, good. I have nothing more. Thank you. Ron? Yeah, just to tidy up a few things. Um, I'm in agreement with what's been said, but uh, the width of the parking spaces. All the parking spaces shown are, in fact, 9 by 18. Okay, and the... Circulation, which has been a control, uh, a, an issue that has been, by your new design, sort of alleviated the concerns I'm talking about. The internal circulation, vehicle, vehicle cir circulation. I, I guess uh, <laughs> uh, it's now both drive access, uh, both drives are two-way. Uh, it's fairly straightforward circulation. There'll be a stop here. Um, the one problem I do I do anticipate, and I, I um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to uh, address it at, at this time, but there is the potential for some uh, stacking if the if peop, if like four people leave at the same time. Uh, there is some potential for uh, trouble leaving the site. That being said, you just wait your turn. Um, it, the internal circulation is straightforward. And, and, and in light of that, Jay, this is to Jay, is it supposed to be 20 feet this way and they're going for 18 feet in my... Uh, the width of the two-way drive access, um, that was one of the confusion points. When they resubmitted, um, this, the, the design, design team came up with 18 feet, I think, trying to be as respectful as possible to the 15-foot streetscape. Part of that discussion is, you know, trying to maintain as much of that as possible. But then when the traffic engineers got their hands on it and, and other folks with other design considerations said, well, you know, that additional two feet, 20 foot wide really functions better for two-way traffic, particularly when you start to think about 
Um, any snow that might accumulate along the edge of the roadways, that can start to narrow things up. And certainly our fire department's uh, uh, concerns with uh, maintaining a 20-foot fire lane access. So, um, so I think the design that they're talking about makes sense. Um, certainly, as was just handed out, if the board so inclined, staff drafted a motion that does have a condition that we'd see a revised set of plans before they get a building permit. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the HVAC would be in the back. That's correct. Is it going to be totally hidden from Route 1, or will there be some siding? The, uh, we anticipate it to be uh, completely hidden. You can see our, our, our pads back here. I mean, it's in the, the back behind the building, uh, outside of the setback, um, rather than even uh, kind of deal with any roof issues, we decided that that would just be an easier solution for multiple reasons. Okay. Um, the sign for Jay again that they show us, uh, it, that meets the, the standard? Yep. Okay. Um, yes, I met the standard for a freestanding sign. Uh, I think I've had enough. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> um, so not a whole lot more to add here. Um, I'll echo those who have um, uh, commented on the, the uh, what I think is a very good outcome given the constraints, um, starting with the, the site site layout, the circulation, the uh, ingress and the egress. Um, I think you know any. I appreciate you noting potential concern about stacking, but I think given this type of use, it's not like a Dunkin' Donuts where not to name names, but that, that <laughs> type of a more of a retail use where you all go there, where you're going to have where you're going to have concentrated. Uh, bursts of, of activity, so it would seem highly unlikely that you'd have more than one or two uh, at a time coming in or out. And I think, um, as others have noted, I, I think it's, uh, it's good to end up with just a single curb cut and um, we're doing a good job of, of respecting and, and protecting that, that stream behind there, which I think up to now has sort of been um, maybe not neglected, but, but not really acknowledged. It might be a better way of putting it. It's so neglected, it doesn't even have a name. Right, it doesn't, yeah. as we commented on before, it doesn't even seem to have a name, and so um, I'm glad that it's, it's getting getting some attention and some protection here. Um, uh, we've, we've talked about architecture. I'll just briefly uh, reiterate that I, I don't think that we're really lowering the bar here. Um, I think the in, in some instances the, the standards are maybe intentionally vague because uh, uh, it can't always be a one-size-fits-all type approach, and I think this has been a very thoughtful process. It's not as if, um, you know, I'm trying to you know, slip something through here. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable with the, the integrity of, of what we're ending up with here architecturally. Uh, likewise, I'm, I'm good with the landscaping. I think there's clearly been some thought put into that, and um, I'm not an expert either, but um, I think uh, I think we appear to be in good shape there. Uh, I'm fine with the waiver for the streetscape buffer um, and just generally um, pleased with, with where we ended up here. Um, I think we ended up with a good good project. So with that, I would uh, just hand you that one. Sure. Completely revised. Thanks. I just think the town should uh, be responsible for naming this stream <laughs> as part of its property. What is it? Well, we can. You can bring that up during planning board comments. <laughs> be something for our next agenda. So with that, unless there are any other comments or questions from the board, I will uh, put forward a, a motion, draft motion for approval. I move to approve the application of Maine Family Eye Care represented by FST under Chapter 405 Zoning Ordinance and Chapter 405B Site Plan Review Ordinance with the following findings, waiver, and conditions. Maine Family Eye Care proposes to redevelop property located at 370 U.S. Route 1. The site is approximately one acre and is located within the B3 and Stream Protection Overlay Zoning Districts. The Planning Board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review ordinance and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. This is one waiver. 
Based on the site characteristics and the evidence provided by the applicant, the board waives the requirement to maintain a 15-foot streetscape buffer strip along the Route 1 frontage to enable better movement throughout the site and minimize the number of site curb cuts. There are two conditions. Condition number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, pay traffic impact fees, B, execute and record the maintenance agreement required by the post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance, C, provide revised plans to address comments and planning staff's memo related to parking stall width and plan notes. D, provide a plan to address issues related to the grading details described in Woodard and Kern's memo dated September 30th, 2015, item number two. Condition number two, prior to the issuance of, sign of a signage, is that intended to be signage permit or signed permit? Uh, signed permit, yeah, thank you. Prior to the issuance of the sign permit, the final site design shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Second. A second. Any discussion? All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you and good luck. <laughs> Item number seven. Comfort Keepers requests a site plan review for amendments to 253 U.S. Route 1, Assessor's Map U43, Lot 3. Jay? Yep, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, let's see, this is the first time the application is before the board. The applicant has been before staff for a pre-application review process, so they did have the benefit of responding to uh, a one series and round of staff comments and, and uh, town engineering comments. Um, to, to which you should have before you for your review. Um, as you noted, this is for the redevelopment um, or really for more of an expansion at 253 U.S. Route 1. The applicant is seeking to uh, put about an 1,100 square foot addition on the existing building as well as add 24 parking spaces to the existing site. Um, you will have received staff comments from planning staff, which we raise questions about internal vehicular circulation, pedestrian ways, landscaping along Route 1, <coughs> buffering of the parking field, architectural and signage, buffering of outdoor storage, and design standards for commercial spaces, as we talked about with the most recent applicant, there are provisions with, in regards to additions <coughs> and renovations to a building. In addition, you will have received comments from Angela Blanchett, the town's engineer, um, with some thoughts in terms of potential um, conflicts or, or concerns for potential conflicts in the transition of the parking fields as well as um, long-term uh, maintenance of stormwater facilities and potential conflicts with snow storage. Um, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jay. And I'll start over to the applicant. Thanks very much. Good evening. My name is Mike Tatamo Wieland. I'm an engineer with Teradyne Consultants. I'm here with Rachel Sennell from Garawan Turgeon and Peter Violette, who's the owner uh, and representing Comfort Keepers. Um, so the site is at 253 Route 1. We're right down the street from it, actually two doors down. Um, it's on the north side of Route 1. Um, so the existing building is in this location. We're actually sitting in this building right here currently. Um, the site's about eight-tenths of an acre um, in size. Uh, the, the existing building is about 4,600 square feet. It's located at the front of the site, um, adjacent to Route 1, and there's an existing parking field next to the site in this light gray color that currently has 25 parking spaces. Um, north of the existing paved parking, there's sort of a little gravel uh, gravel area that perhaps one day was used for laydown or storage or something. It, it's not used today. It's sort of overgrown, and then the remainder of the site is towards the towards the north, towards the back is um, forested. Uh, the proposed project is, as Jay mentioned, it's about 1,150 square foot building addition, 36 by 32. It's on the north end of the existing building, so it's this orange box here. 
Um, so the building, I the intent is to, to use the building primarily for the offices of Comfort Keepers. Comfort Keepers provides in-home care for seniors and disabled. Uh, about 900 square feet of the total building, uh, that new and existing and new, will be uh, leased to, to a separate business unknown at this time. So as part of the, the site improvements, the, the location of the building addition um, requires the relocation of an existing propane tank that's in the back. So, so really, there's a new propane tank or, or a a propane tank in a new location shown on the site plan, that's an existing tank that, that'll be relocated. There's an existing concrete slab, it's about 750 square feet behind that existing building today. Much of that will be removed. Um, there are two sheds that exist out there today. Um, they're used for storage, they're in good shape, they're, they're painted the same blue uh, siding with white trim as the, the existing building out there. Uh, one of those sheds will remain exactly where it is today. The other one will, will be sort of relocated just north of that area. Um, and the slab will be used um, for, dumps, for the dumpster. Uh, the dumpster will be screened. I know that the, the uh, question of screening that dumpster came up in, in staff review. So the dumpster will be screened on two sides by the, the existing shed and the relocated shed. The south face, which is sort of facing Route 1, if you will, will be, uh, there'll be a new fence installed there, a six foot high fence. Uh, so we feel that screen that we think it's a little, a little different than a typical um, dumpster location where you don't have sort of natural screening around it and you would put a, a dumpster enclosure. We, we'd prefer not to uh, enclose it. In fact, it would be, you wouldn't see the dumpster enclosure because uh, it, it would be behind the, the sheds and, um, and it, in fact, from Route 1, that area isn't, isn't visible um, anyways. So, uh, so the other sort of big piece of this, of the site improvement is <coughs> the parking expansion that will take place north, north of the existing um, parking. Uh, the plans you have in front of you show a 24 space parking expansion. Um, kind of a similar layout to, to the existing, except uh, a little larger, wider drive aisle to meet, meet the design standards, 25 foot drive width, uh, 9 by 18 spaces. Uh, Stormwater um, today runs sort of to the north end of the site. Um, the runoff patterns won't be changed by any of the development. There will be a soil filter, a grass underdrain soil filter constructed at the north end. This will collect runoff um, from the developed areas and attenuate the peak flows um, as well as uh, treat pollutants from the, the stormwater. In addition to that, there will be um, a drip edge that, that has a filter media in it on the, along the um, east and west sides of the building addition, so those, that'll collect and treat run off from the, the new building uh, area as well. There are, um, there are no pole-masted lights out there today. There are a couple building-mounted lights um, that I, I don't believe are cut-off fixtures. I don't believe they meet any, any of, the, of today's standards. Um, the proposed plans show three new pole-mounted lights, two in sort of the rear parking area, one um, sort of near the end of the existing parking area at the north end, and then the, uh, there'll be two new building-mounted lights, cut-off fixtures. All the lighting will be LED uh, and meet current standards. The existing lights on the building will be replaced; they'll be removed. So, lighting will be brought up to, to standard for the whole site. Uh, so, as, as Jay mentioned, there were there were some outstanding staff comments. Um, and, and really, the way the way we see them is that there's there are three three big ones. They have to do with um, sort of accessibility of a couple of the parking spaces or safety of the parking, um, the addition of impervious area, or is there anything we can do to reduce um, the amount of impervious area we're proposing, 
uh, and then pedestrian access, site access. So we, the rendering I have here sort of shows, um, shows our efforts that we've made to, to address those comments, and I'd like to go through those um, now with you. So on the plan you have, there's a, there's a parking stall, the first parking stall on the right in, in the new parking area. That was greater than a 90 degree turn um, on, the, on the plans that you have in front of you, and there was concern that it would be kind of a difficult um, space to get into for people. So that space, we, we've looked at that. We, we agree it wasn't the best parking space, and, and so what we've done is eliminated that space. The landscaping has been sort of pushed back from the edge in that area. Um, will will be used for snow storage as well as some of the other areas around the site. So we feel like just eliminating that space was probably the, the solution to to that that trouble space. The other uh, space that raised concern was that there was there's a the last space on the left in the existing parking, and I the concern was that someone coming out of the new parking area, um, it, this space would be unprotected or, so this person's making sort of a left-right movement in front and, and they would be approaching that car sort of parked right near that sort of S-turn that connects the two parking areas. So again, we've, we've eliminated that. We're proposing striping. We think it's, um, it's still useful for propane access and, um, We'd still like it paved for ease of plowing and snow removal, uh, but it'll be striped off so it won't be um, it, it, it won't be a, a viable parking space for folks. The so the other issues that I mentioned that were brought up in, in the staff memo were uh, the amount of impervious area. So there isn't a lot of opportunity to um, to reduce impervious area. We, we've got Parking um, it, with very little wasted space, really. We're, we're trying to meet the needs of the applicant's use. Um, we understand it exceeds that of the ordinance requirements. Um, but w so a couple areas we, we did see an opportunity to reduce pavement was the parking space that we eliminated um, that I already mentioned, as well as the entrance. So today this, this uh, parking area is just squared right to Route 1. We're going to remove uh, this amount of pavement, add some shrubs in there, um, and, and sort of dress up the entrance a little bit while reducing the impervious area. There's also uh, the elimination, a small elimination of um, impervious area at the, the southeast corner of the existing building, which, um, which again, it, there, there, there wasn't, there isn't a, a huge opportunity to reduce impervious area, but we've, we've done what we feel we could. Uh, and the other, the other item was pedestrian walkways. So staff, um, staff commented that there's an opportunity to connect uh, the Route 1 sidewalk to the, the site. So we've, we're adding a, a sidewalk adjacent to the, the access or the driveway, uh, just on the west side of the driveway to get into the parking area. Um, and there was a comment about uh, a, offering a paved uh, paved access to the egress doors on the west side of the existing building. So these are existing doors. There's today they're just sort of these landings with a, a couple of wood steps down to the lawn area. Um, frankly, the applicant feels like it, it works fine today and it is a, a, a safe means of egress. But um, we understand uh, current fire code and the wishes of the fire department. So. Um, there will be a, a paved sidewalk um, constructed out to Route 1 there as well. So um, we feel like this is a, a, a fairly simple project, small building addition um, and parking addition. Uh, understanding there are some staff concerns, we feel like um, we feel like we've addressed them today. I understand you haven't seen them before tonight. Uh, we would request conditional approval um, if the board would would consider it, um, and allow us to work through these uh, the, the details of, of our solutions with staff. 
So uh, I'm happy to answer technical questions. Rachel can answer um, technical questions as well about uh, some of the landscaping. <laughs> And uh, certainly Peter can answer uh, questions related to um, operations at the site. So thanks very much and uh, happy to take your questions. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, before we go to board discussion, we do have the opportunity for public comment on this item. So if anyone is interested, come on up. All right, seeing none, we'll go right to the board. Mike, would you like to start off this time? Uh, sure. Um, the, the applicant, uh, let me ask the applicant, you, you're looking for um, approval tonight? Yes, sir. Um, I guess I don't really have uh, any objections to that necessarily, but I just have a quick, couple quick questions. On, uh, so the use of this site is going to dramatically change from what it historically has been. It's, it seems like there's not going to be uh, a retail... Um, presence really is where, where people come and go correct so yeah so so comfort keepers will they'll have offices there for their their staff um, they there will be training offered for the caretakers um, training training will place take place during the day um, during normal business hours mm -hmm. um, the the reason for the the excess and parking above the ordinance requirements really um, have to do with with the training. So um, they they have uh, a staff that works outside of the office in in homes taking taking care of folks. Uh, those people have training requirements that they need to meet, so that they have to come to the site uh, regularly um, to 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 take these training courses. The training courses. Um, are offered in in large groups, two to three times per month, uh, currently, and with um, and that's a, that's regulated by the state, as I understand it. And so, uh, the applicant, the owner, has also indicated to me that um, uh, the state regulations um, may be changing to require even more frequent um, training. So, that's that's the the reason for the the number of parking spaces shown. Um, on the plan. So, to, back to you, back to your question, the the use will be changing today. There's there's uh, sort of a mix of retail and office and um, um, sort of services, uh, but it'll it'll be largely comfort keepers and then a, a, again a nine a 900 square foot leasable area that'll be a, a tenant that's currently unknown. Okay, and we don't and that tenant could could be retail. Could be. A um, couple of site plan questions, really. Um, I see the uh, the light poles you have on the new parking area. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't appear. To, uh, are they protected in any way from the stall? I mean, this detail is not large enough for me to know otherwise. So. Yeah. So, <coughs> the, so the, these uh, they're set on a concrete base. Um, it's a two foot diameter concrete base. Usually, when when you have a light pole that that isn't protected behind a curb or something like that. The concrete base extends a couple feet above mm. um, the pavement. It's like like you would see um, in the middle of a <coughs> supermarket parking lot or, or something like yeah. that. But they they're, so they're off the edge of pavement. Um, they're off the edge of pavement. Oh yeah, they're, they'll they'll be a couple feet off the edge of pavement. Oh okay, a foot I, or two off the edge. It, of pavement. it doesn't really show that. Yeah. So so that that symbol yeah may not okay. may not be uh, completely accurate I guess but. Uh, the, the base itself will be off the edge of pavement, the light pole, and then the light will overhang potentially over the over the pavement itself. But and the other thing that struck me is like, <clears throat> if I'm parking, I mean, um, ideally, it, there's, there's going to be a uh, interest in <coughs> parking in the front parking lot because from from this perspective, it appears that parking in the back is a long way and could be undesirable in <coughs> the more inclement months. Mm -hmm. um, toward that end, uh, I mean, will folks know? Is it easy to see, in your view, that additional parking in rear type of thing? I mean, do you need any kind of announcement sign or anything like that for folks that are using it? I guess, in some ways, maybe not. I'm kind of trying to answer my own question, maybe because these folks are going to be in, uh, very familiar <coughs> with the site because they'll be coming here either every day, and in some cases, two, three times a month. Right. right. That, that's true. That that would that was my thought as well. That that 
w when there is a large group here, uh, it's people who are coming on a not maybe not a daily basis, but a, a regular basis, so that they would they would know about that. Um, if I, I don't think the applicant would I don't think the applicant would would object to. Um, perhaps a small sign saying additional parking in the rear. I'm or not sure like it's that. necessary. I'm not sure it's necessary. Either. Maybe some thought to it, that's all. And, uh, and, and should this uh, future use be retail, um, it, would be my, it would be my view that the folks that, uh, the employees, and certainly those that come a few times a month for training would park in the rear, and the front would be reserved for the kind of traffic that you see move several times during the course of an hour. Sure. Um, but that could be a future discussion, I don't know. Um, if I'm parking in the rear, I also it also struck me that I would enjoy maybe a demarcated way to get to the building, whether it be um, some sort of walkway along the, you know, the, the uh, I, I don't know whether it would be the west side of the uh, parking lot, or something to that effect, maybe a, some kind of way that, so you don't have pedestrians yeah, we, we this comment was made by staff, and mm -hmm. we we talked about it. We frankly didn't think it would be used. I mean, if you think about a think about a big parking lot, a Walmart or something like that, what if people people yeah. are used to walking through parking lots like this all the time. I, we we did consider it. Um, I'll be honest, and <laughs> frankly, didn't we thought it would be sort of a waste and some. A, in, in a, on a site we're trying to reduce impervious area, we, we thought adding a sidewalk along that hmm. um, parking area um, would be a waste. Well, maybe uh, maybe you can give some thought to maybe some striping on the area that you are going to pave, just to kind of help guide folks maybe sure. to that choke area or that S turn, as you call it. Sure. Um, and uh, are there enough um, pole-mounted lights? It, it you show two, is that correct, in the new yeah, area? Yeah, three. Two in the new parking area and then one sort of at the at the north end of the... I mean, you'll have a lighting plan and that'll tell us... There is a lighting plan, yeah. We, there's a, we, we've submitted a photometric plan um, okay, as I part of the application and um, feel that the lighting is... And, is uh, I mean, the building's attractive. It is today and you're matching it. So uh, I don't have any real... Um, it's too bad that that wasn't the face of Route 1, but uh, nevertheless, I think it's very attractively done. I think this might be an opportunity to kind of improve on your sign. Um, uh, you have an insert here that shows like the current day situation where it's very busy, et cetera, et cetera. But um, your new sign, although it's, it's easier to read, it's clean, it's got one tenant, if you will. If there's going to be two, you're going to need space to put that. That's right. So, <coughs> as also as Jay mentioned, the, the sign, um, as proposed, um, didn't meet the requirements of the sign ordinance. Uh, since that time, the, the owner, the applicant's been in contact with uh, the code enforcement officer. He understands he'll, he'll need a sign permit for that. And so, the, the, the essentially, the existing sign will be lowered to eight feet, which, which is a maximum height for a sign in the location it's in, uh, so which is between five and ten feet from the right of way. So greater than five feet, but less than ten feet from the right of way. Eight foot is maximum, um, and 32 square feet is the maximum um, surface area so of the sign. So, so in fact, you're going to redo, be, you're gonna redo the sign. It'll be completely redone. Yeah. yeah. So the existing. Um, the existing structure will remain, but the, the, the insert, the, oh. the well, itself I was going to suggest you might want to even, well, the existing structure, you're not going to keep the poles. I mean, if you're going to reduce the height. <coughs> the poles know. will be cut down, essentially. Yeah, they, they'll, they'll remain and they'll be cut. Well, my two cents to that would be, I think the sign, the sign is not consistent with the, the architectural design of the building. I think I, I might lean towards something with a little bit more New England feel to it. Obviously, it'll be lower, a little bit wider. That's fine, but um, I think some improving could be made on the sign. <coughs> um, other than that, um, good luck. Thank you. I think uh, I, it appears that the issues, anyway, from my perspective, seem to be uh, very easily rectified. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Mike. John. Uh, 
I'm pretty good with the project uh, overall. Just a couple of questions for staff. Uh, stormwater, are we okay with this retention pond and the runoff <coughs> the back parking lot? Yep. All uh, slopes in that direction towards the high school, so to speak. Yep. Uh, the town engineer provided a memo. Um, she's comfortable with their design. The one issue um, that was raised was concerns for potential for snow storage to be pushed into that area. Because mm -hmm. um, that would then push all the gunk that's sitting on top of the parking lot. Um, so the recommendation was to put up some type of barrier um, that might limit. And should we consider that swale? There seems to be a little bit of room uh, from at least the drawing I'm showing on the swale. There seems to be a little bit of room that you could actually expand that a little bit towards the, I guess would be the, the west. Yep. But concerning the storm we just had recently, you might want to consider kind of expanding that a little bit. And I would like staff to take a look at that. The engineering. Yeah. Uh, so I, I will say what um, that that swell will only receive runoff from that parking area. I, 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 yeah, we got a quite a doozy the other day. <laughs> that, that was a very intense storm, um, and it caused problems everywhere. Um, but, but I will say the advantage we have here is that this system is really, th there's no what I'll call on, uh, run on to the site. So you don't have adjacent properties contributing runoff. Um, this is higher than everything around it. The, the I've got a, a laser pointer that's on its left leg here. But so the, the, the sites that are around the, um, the project site are, are lower in elevation. And there is sort of a, a grain break about halfway down the yeah. existing parking lot. So, so it is well, an advantage we have is it's not, um, you know, it's not receiving a ton of runoff. But I understand. Does it uh, just go in the retention pond, or does it go into the system? So, so there, there's a soil filter here. So it's a, a basin that mm -hmm. that will. It's designed to um, store. It, it's not. It's not designed to store um, sort of a large amount of runoff. It's 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 really designed. Um, with the intent to, to capture the first flush of runoff, which is, okay. is usually the most um, full of more pollutants than, than um, sort of the, the later runoff, and filter that. So it's, it's less of a, al although it does provide um, storage and peak flow attenuation, that's really not its, its primary um, okay. goal. Right. And, and but that's, sorry. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to ask, could you, um, Inform us of what the uh, um, design flow. What's the storm event it's designed for? Is it a five, ten, twenty-five year storm? Yeah. So, so we did. I, we did uh, look at the two, ten, and twenty-five year storms, and there's really. I mean, we have a small site here, and it looks like we're we're, we're increasing impervious area quite a bit. When it, in fact, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not. It's not a huge area. It, it might be a large percentage of the lot, but but it's not a huge area. So even though it is sort of a, a shallow, relatively shallow filter basin, it, it does um, knock down the peak flows. So peak flows in the proposed condition will be less than uh, existing peak flows for the 2, 10, and 25-year storm event. Okay. I'm good with that. I'm good with the building design. I'm glad you eliminated one of those parking spaces that yeah. did look like a problem. Other than that, I'm fine. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Ron? Yeah, I got a lot of questions. First of all, Jay mentioned the barrier, and you sort of just slid over that. It, okay. And is there any intent of having a barrier for the in front of the filter basin? Yeah. Yeah. We so the we we have discussed that the applicant um, wishes to use boulders for for that use to to keep snow out of there. Also, in the um, the maintenance manual will. Um, that, that the town engineers requested will specify that snow is not to be uh, stored in these things, which is it, it's a pretty standard um, requirement for for these types of bases, to just in order to reduce um, the frequency of maintenance. Okay, um, now I want to go backwards a little bit. How many parking spaces are going to be on the front, and how many are going to be in the back? So there'll be 20. At, it, this plan here, which is what we're proposing, is 23 in the front, 23 in the back. Okay. Um, 
jumping ahead a little bit. If you're going to stripe it, it's going to be the perma stripe. That's something we really, not that thing that washes every other, other year. And my concern is that you said that, and how many employees are going to be coming and going? Do we have an estimate? Yeah, so <coughs> t today I, there are, I believe, about 15 <coughs> employees who will be at the site every day. Okay, let's assume you rent out the 900 feet. Where are those people going to go on an everyday basis? If you're going to have 50 plus and then you're going to rent out and somebody's going to come in and they're going to say, I'm going to need X amount of, based on the ordinance, mm -hmm. spaces, and you seem to be implying that every space is going to be taken, what's left for them? Yeah, so so I, I think Peter Violet, he, he's got a obviously the best sense of how uh, the site will operate, and he can probably give you better insight than I could into this. I'll, I'll let Peter address that. Thank you, Mike. Good evening, everyone. I'm Peter Violet, the owner of Comfort Keepers. Um, just to answer, that's come up a couple of times, and I've already been able to secure a lease with an internet company, internet-based company that isn't going to require any more parking than just a one individual for the time being that operates it. And it's an online business that, um, that does a lot of trading through Amazon. They purchase products, list them on Amazon, and kind of move them along that way. So I'm be, I've been able to come up with a five-year lease for that individual. So it should address any additional needs beyond what my needs will be. But even if that were not to work out, we can, uh, if we really need to get creative as far as our training requirements go, we can kind of work around whatever the, the tenant's, tenant's needs would be. So I'm, I'm quite confident that um, if for whatever reason this, this lease would fall through, that we, we, can, we can still use the building the way that we need to and uh, accommodate anybody that might join us because it's not a large portion that we're leasing out. So it would not really accommodate uh, much of anything, uh, a whole lot of traffic, I don't believe. And my, my intention would be as much as possible to keep it for office use because that's kind of what I'm changing the building over to. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, as far as the architecture is concerned, I know you're adding on. Is, is this an entirely, I, I guess I'm a little confused, is this an entirely new architecture for that building? So that starting from scratch. No, sorry. So this, this, this large structure here is existing today. That's how it looks today. This, this area with the lower roof, that's the addition. And so it's going to look similar to what? It'll, it'll, yes, the siding will match, the color will match, um, size of the windows, uh, an effort was made. Okay. Um, and I guess I'm, I still haven't heard to my satisfaction uh, the town engineer's concern and staff's in concern about how this is all going to work from a turning around point of view uh, between uh, the existing and the proposed parking areas to the safety even of employees, no, no less anybody else who may be using the facilities. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, can you, can you I'm sorry, I'm not sure I understand. So the, the, as I understand, staff's concerns and the engineer's concerns, they were, they were really with two, two parking spaces. One proposed parking space, which we've eliminated, and, and that had to do with a turning movement into it. Uh, and then an existing space, which, um, Maybe there was a perception that it, it, it may encroach into the access aisle itself. So again, we've eliminated that space. So I think we feel that by eliminating the two problem spaces, most of those concerns um, are addressed. Um, was there a traffic study that's done recently before this project of how many cars or autos are going in and out of there at a particular times? Because I'll tell you where I'm going with that one. If you have, let's use 50 just for the sake of argument. Employees, they come for training and they all leave. We're into a, a, another mess on Route 1 that I'm dealing with a, on another committee that is, you know, just a cluster. And how is, how is that all going to translate in this situation? Was there a traffic study then, Jay? There was. Yes. And 
I, think, I guess I don't have that. I do. I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Yep, it was in the uh, August 31st submission, um, and their traffic engineer looked at this as an office building and determined that the proposed use would generate less traffic than the existing uses of retail. So um, it was found to have a lesser impact. Boy, who am I to argue with, with that study? Um, <laughs> Um, what else did I have? Oh, oh, we haven't talked about any architect, uh, any uh, landscaping at all. What's that going to be about? Sure, thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll give a brief overview of while the landscape architect is sitting over here, and hope I don't make a fool of myself. But certainly, if you have questions for her, um, she can answer them as well. So, um, so there, there are there's some there's quite a bit of existing vegetation out there today. Uh, alongside the the, um, the eastern edge of the existing parking lot, there, there are some significant um, deciduous trees. Out in front of the site, there's some existing, uh, there's an existing deciduous tree and, and some significant um, sort of shrubs in front of the building, uh, sort of a mix of evergreen and, and uh, deciduous as well. Um, the two new trees, will be added uh, within these landscape areas between uh, the, the, the existing and the proposed parking field. And then some, some screening plantings uh, will be installed in the area of um, sort of the propane tank. So today that, that tank is screened with U's uh, and it, it the, the propane tank frankly is is not visible whatsoever unless you, you go around to the side of it and, and actually look from the back. Uh, so w the proposal is to um, use that same same planting um, to screen the, the relocated propane tank. Uh, in addition to that, there are a couple more sort of flowering shrubs um, at the back of the addition as well as another um, evergreen uh, bush as well, or maybe it's a small spruce, a dwarf spruce or something like that. Yeah. So uh, again, that, that was, sort of the engineer's uh, overview of landscaping, but certainly Rachel can, can give you a little more detail if you'd like. Question for, for you. Are you happy with that kind of screening? Because you had other comments as far as the propane tank is concerned. Yeah, so I guess um, I think it's helpful to understand what the existing uh, landscaping around the propane tank is and how that, that will function uh, for the board to consider. But I think more... Um, Maybe one of the bigger issues that, that staff just identified. And looking at the grading plan, it appears that there's going to be a lot of regrading right up basically to the property lines. And the plans sort of show the squiggly lines of existing vegetation, but we don't really have a nice, clear understanding of what trees actually exist along to help at least break up the visual, um, you know, the massing, if you will, of the back parking lot. Because as you can see, sort of as you get back there, there's a lot of parking going on. You know, you're really starting to get into it, a lot of paved area with what's happening, not just on the site, but particularly around the site. So just really trying to understand which of the existing trees, because there are some, as was mentioned earlier, some very significant trees back there. Um, it, it wasn't clear, um, based on my review of the materials, what would remain, what would necessarily go, and what would that mean in terms of um, you know, having any landscaping in the area. So that was I yeah, more. So, yeah. So I, I can touch on that a little bit. So we we did make every effort um, to in grading the site to to reduce the, the footprint of the grading and to, to maintain as much vegetation as possible um, along the, the edges of the property uh, while still Accomplishing what what we set out to do, so that's sort of that's how we arrived at um, at the what I'll call the proposed um, edge of trees or the proposed tree line. The site is uh, doesn't offer um, the shape of the site doesn't offer uh, a lot of ability uh, to get creative with with the design of a parking um, when you've got 18 foot long stalls and a 20 foot five foot drive aisle. You're you're pretty much fixed with with what that uh, width is, and then um, you know your grading constraints from there pretty much dictate where um, the edge of clearing will be. Um, 
so it, really that said the, it's the, I think the applicant would would agree in in saying that they're going to preserve as many of those significant trees as possible while, while still being able to, to construct the improvements <coughs> so sh short of a short of a, I, I don't know a, a, a tree survey or something like that I, I'm, I'm not sure what else um, what else could be done and, I, and I'm not sh frankly not sure um, what, what that would what, what the, the, the really the, the goal would be there but um, thank you but you see it leaves it vague <laughs> and that's that's a little bit of a discomfort not a lot but a little bit of discomfort because if we don't put it in writing then and we approve the project, then you can go ahead and do whatever you want, actually. You know, and the words are meaningless. Uh, so I have a, a little bit of, on my behalf, and I know on Ms. Huglis's behalf, a little bit of apprehension on that. The last issue I have is the HAV. They're going to be hidden so that they're not. Yeah, so, so there are a couple of units. Um, today on the back of this existing building um, one of them will need to be relocated so it'll be it'll be relocated sort of in the in the northwest corner at the back of the building addition and it'll be it'll be screened with shrubs there okay okay I've said my two pieces mr. chair thank you yeah. thanks Ron Roger uh, thank you I thought you were going to him next. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep everybody on their toes okay uh, I'm a little confused on the um, the, uh, the yellow building and the orange building. I was under the impression that Comfort Keepers was going to be in the yellow portion. They're not. They're going to be in the orange. Uh, they're they're going to they're going to uh, be in oh, both. They're going to be in both. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, the um, and the other the other thing regarding the training, and this probably has, he could answer probably, this better. Yeah. But how how many times? Um, like during the month where you have all your trainers coming down, the trainees coming down? That, that varies, but typically it can be two to three times a month for the largest amount of people coming in. Uh, but we're gonna ha we have ongoing applicants who come in for employment. That, that's an ongoing thing that happens daily. We can have several. Um, but as far as the largest number, you might probably two to three times. And what I plan to do with that, because I'm going to have a significant portion dedicated to what I call a training facility, which is going to be kind of the hands-on uh, for people to come in and really have a, really enhance our training beyond what we're doing now. Um, I'm going to be opening that up to, to as a community service to the public. So I don't expect that I'll have you know 20 people at a time taking advantage of that. But I'm hoping to set up a program where maybe we can we can encourage uh, maybe the high school juniors and seniors to come in and kind of go through our same training program that we are offering to our caregivers as we train them and also to the general public uh, a little bit like SMA has right now what they call the savvy caregiver um, courses that, that they put on so we're hoping to, to develop that as again as just being a good neighbor to the community so it will increase again that that's why that parking area is really important that we don't limit to what we can do with the building because we did not allow for enough parking to do our own work, daily work, but also to, as I said, to open this up a little bit to the to the community, which is again what the ultimate goal is. Okay. And, Thank and, you. And all the training will be done right on site there. Yes. Yes. We we have we have two offices. We have one in Kennebunk as well, but all of our training happens here in what we call our home office. This is our central base right here in Scarborough. Is this for the whole state? No. So we we cover. Uh, we we it's actually it's franchise. Um, we, ca we have two franchises, and but we operate out of a central location, which is right here in Scarborough. We've been at this for eight years now. And uh, even though we have a physical location in uh, Kennebunk, we do all of our, our hiring, our training right here on site. So that's why th this building is really important to everything else. And to answer your question, we go from Freeport to Kittery is the area that we cover. Okay, good. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> Actually, the, um, the other questions I had might be better addressed to Jay. And... Um, they, they pertain to the, um, the fire department's request for paving. Mm -hmm. those. Now, does it have to be paving, or could it be like pavers or something like that? Because it apparently this, it's not an issue right now. And it doesn't meet code right now, so okay. it does. they do require that you have a paved pathway from all egress doors. It doesn't, 
I know the applicant right now has it running to Route 1. It could run back up into the parking field, you know, so long as it connects and, and basically needs to be maintained throughout the, you know, so the winter, nice, yeah. no, winter. But it has to be paved. It can't be pavers, you know, like those. Um, I guess I would have to defer that question to the fire department. Okay. Then regarding that, though, um, you, you had mentioned you were going to have that going out to Route 1. Uh, I would suggest you have it stop around the building. Otherwise, you'll have people walking. <laughs> Walking, you know, if anybody's walking on Route One, which I don't think many people are, um, if they are, you know, they might end up walking up and knocking on the back door. So, just a, just a thought there. Um, and on the uh, light stanchions in the parking lot, um, I, I understand what you said. It's going to be on a concrete base. Are there going to be what, what do they call those things that are those concrete protectors? Say bollards, you mean? Oh. Uh, are you talking about yeah. sort of the smaller so when cylinders? When someone goes to back up, they hit that, and not the, the light. Well, I think stand. that's the cement. Yeah. That that's the cement stand base yeah. that he's talking about. Uh, well, you know, you're sure talking about a base for the whole thing, though, right? Yeah. yeah so the, the the light pole base itself is a is a two foot diameter concrete <laughs> base that's anywhere from two oh, to so two to three high. feet high. So oh, okay. So yeah. a if someone were to pull a little too far forward or back up into it by mistake, that they would okay. they would hit this two foot diameter okay, concrete base, it so, it, so okay. it wouldn't damage the light. That that's the that's the intent. Okay. Um, actually, I have no other questions then. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Roger. Yes, Ron. I have a question before we get to Nick for the for the applicant. Okay. Um, I'm not a real estate agent, but. To my knowledge, have you bought the building, first of all? I have. I've owned it since December. Okay. Don't you have to uh, acknowledge the leases of the people that are in there right now? The building is empty right now. There's nobody in there? No. The, all the leases terminated at the end of September. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Didn't know that. Haven't been in that building. Okay. That answers that question. <laughs> Go for it. Thank you. Nick? I'm getting the scraps here. Um, <laughs> whatever's left over. Uh, what I, as for my two cents, um, I think I think your signage need work. I mean, from what I can see, I, I mean, everyone's covered everything else. Um, I'd like to see a nicer sign. I, I think you stand on the sidewalk, you look down Route One this way, look down Route One that way. Hey, what's going to look nice here? Work on that. That would make me happy. Uh, the rest of it's been covered. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we've <laughs> we've covered things pretty thoroughly here. Um, pretty thoroughly vetted for for one evening. Um, you know, typically, I would lean toward wanting to limit parking. Um, you know, I, I think we it's it's interesting depending on the circumstances. Sometimes here, applicants making the argument and and providing evidence for why they actually don't need as much parking as the <laughs> ordinance might require. Um, other times, they, they want, uh, want parking above and beyond that, and I, I typically feel that my experience that we overbuild parking all over this town. Um, but that said, um, I, I think you've made a fairly compelling argument for, for why you, you need what you're proposing, given the unique combination of uses at the site, um, even though they won't all be occupied most of the time um, and recognizing as well that, that um, you know, despite the fact that the incoming tenant would be sort of a low impact tenant, so to speak, in terms of parking, who knows who may be there down the road. So it, it is good to have that flexibility uh, and, and I do appreciate the efforts that have been made around the margins um, where, where there have been oppor opportunities to reduce impervious surface given the constraints of the site. Um, appreciate the responsiveness on the on the the uh, internal circulation as well as the connections, the sidewalk connections, pedestrian access. Um, you have uh, responded to the question about HVAC. So we're looking through to see if there's anything that somehow slipped through the cracks here. Um, we talked about signage, and that's something that typically, you know, fairly commonly, uh, applicants will work through with staff and planning department um, to, 
get that time permit, and I, I would agree that I'll take that opportunity to, to to take another look at that and see okay. if we can Understood. move it a little bit. Um, I think it's definitely moving in the in the right direction. Um, you know, this is a, this type of thing um, can be a little tricky in terms of considering final approvals. You know, we have so many things that have been clearly pretty well addressed and are in the process of being addressed, but yet not included in all the drawings yeah. that we have. And we've kind of talked through a lot of it this evening. And I'm always a little wary of saddling staff with too many conditions. Um, that said, I think that um, overall, we're not really talking about anything too terribly onerous here. And it is, a, at the end of the day, a fairly straightforward project. I think. Um, You've been responsive, and I think um, I think it's in a, in a pretty good place. With the caveat that there are a few loose ends, so um, I will put forward a motion with some conditions, and this is somewhat on the fly here, so you kind of uh, bear with me. And and there's been a lot of discussion collectively right. among the board on this tonight about various items and loose ends to tie up and. So once I've read this, um, we'll get to a second. Feel free to add anything or make any corrections if, if anyone feels that we've missed something or mischaracterized something. Before I go on, did you have something, Jay? Uh, yes, I'd just like to ask, uh, Mr. Chair, there are some, there were some questions I heard, and I guess um, for clarity, would it be helpful for staff to raise the questions we have after you've made your motion or now, um, just because we do have some draft conditions that sort of address a number of the issues, but there was some detail that I was hearing from some board members that I want to be sure we have direction on so it doesn't, I don't, you know, they come forward with a plan and I say, well, I think that's what we meant. Mm -hmm. um, so whether you want to do that before you make mm -hmm. a motion or, or afterwards. Uh, I guess my preference would be to put those out there before the motion okay. goes forward, otherwise it can get a little Yep. Tricky to keep track of. So a couple, couple of things I heard had to do with pedestrian access. Um, there was a question about pedestrian access from the back lot. Um, I wasn't sure if that was an item we want codified or if we're comfortable with what the applicant has to date. Um, that's, that's a question I, yeah, I had. Yeah, I, I uh, <coughs> brought that up, I believe. And um, what I'd like to see as part of a condition is that there be some demarcation that directs pedestrians from the back parking lot to the uh, maybe the existing sidewalk that for the entrance to the side or front of the building, yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, in the form of, of striping or either something striping like that. or um, I, I know it's hard for me to maybe verbalize this from from my seat, but uh, when I look at the plan and I see the striped area, no parking striped area mm -hmm. in front of the shed. Mm -hmm. I see I see an opportunity possibly to um, bring forth a small paved area that connects that stripe area to the to the parking the new parking area just I, I, I understand and we've, we've contemplated that and, and I think we're willing to, to add that little piece of parking a uh, uh, little piece of sidewalk that I think you're talking about right here yes and, and it seems to me that uh, absent of that you're probably going to have people walking that way anyway instead of going into the into the the lane Agreed. so I don't know I don't know how you want to put that in the condition but that's so just a, just so I'm clear I'm sorry to jump in but you're really talking about in that parking field transition area yes delineating that yeah. okay okay yes thank you okay thanks Mike um, that was one question I had for clarity um, let's see we'll come to that one uh, about sidewalk connection uh, yeah Thank you. Um, since we're on pedestrian, so sidewalk connection. Um, so again, I really haven't had a chance to look at this plan. One of the considerations staff had when we looked at the, the Route 1 sidewalk connection, I know right now they proposed it right along the driveway access, but it sort of terminates, again, right into the parking field, into one of the parking spaces. The question staff would have is if it could go just on the other side of the sign and, keep, and be a straight line into that sidewalk in front of the building. Um, that was yeah. So uh, yeah, we we, we understood um, the the comment that yeah. you provided to us. That although it looks like a sidewalk, it's actually not a 
it's not a sidewalk, it's not wide enough, and so there's, there's a paved area, a bituminous curb, and then the parking field, and that little paved area in front of the building is not wide enough. There are currently um, planters there, so it, it doesn't function as a sidewalk today, and it, I frankly, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's fit to be a sidewalk. So the accessibility is really so coming behind those two parking spaces exactly. and then yeah. cutting in. Yeah. Um, and then I did hear at least two members, maybe three members, really uh, seek to see improved signage, maybe get away from sort of the um, uh, the posts and maybe more towards a monument sign, something that's – and so um, – that, that, that's one of those that we, I think, need some direction on is the board, and the board certainly um, would like to hear right. some direction. Um, I also comment on the sign. Uh, I, I would prefer that um, – I think that's an easy thing to come back and have us review. But I understand that the, uh, the board's uh, um, recent action is more or less to leave that to the uh, department. Which I'm fine with too. I think the board, I think the uh, planning department has a keen sense of what we're looking for, and in, in the sense of a monument sign, there's plenty of examples. I mean, the previous applicant, the main eye care applicant. I mean, that kind of a, in my view anyway, is what I what I'd rather see there. This is a great opportunity, and I know that uh, it's, I know it's money, but it's a great opportunity every time we see a, a site plan come before us, especially one that's being renovated, if you will, and improved an opportunity for us to look back and see what we can do to improve the site, and I think the sign does bear improvement along those lines. So I mean, I, I'm good with either way, because cause in my view, everything can move forward, and it's just a small detail, really, in the scheme of things, to come back and have us review the sign. But if, um, if the board would rather have that, just defer it to the planning department, that's fine, too. Okay. Did you have something there? I, I would prefer the monument style. And have some guidance is helpful. Nicer look. Okay. Corey? I'm happy with staff uh, and yourself reviewing any signs. Thank you. I, I, packages. I, 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 I was going to note that, it, that uh, at times staff will, will uh, turn to the chair um, mm -hmm. for, for input and uh, it's sort of you know, at their discretion whether, whether um, felt that the applicant ultimately would need to come back to the board if they're proposing something radically different than what was discussed or something like that, but I think generally that's fine. works pretty well. Roger? Yeah, I just wanted to um, make sure I understood what um, what Mike was talking about with the um, s the striped walkway. Was it, were you talking about putting it in that right away? Uh, no. Or around the tree? No, in front of the uh, relocated shed. East okay. of the relocated shed, connecting that striped area to the new parking area. But the walkway would not be in the right-of-way? No. Okay. No. The purpose would be to direct pedestrians out of there. See, from way over here, I heard it differently. Yeah, I can, I can, I think I understand, I think I understand, maybe I can point to the plan. So, there is sort of a, there's, there's a last parking stall here, there's a, a landscape area, and then you've got this no parking striped area. Okay, yeah. So, and, and this is sort of the, the vehicular access. It, I think what this word is saying, that if it was a, a paved sidewalk uh, crossing this landscape area, yeah. so it keeps people out of the, the path of the Well, vehicle. that's what I was concerned about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah, we're, and yes. we think that's a good idea, and we're willing to do that. Thank you. Those were about the last of the detailing issues I had. I just want to be sure the way I've crafted this. Um, I need to advise, please. Um, so yeah, that was that was the other. So I have as a condition of approval to address staff comments in terms of landscaping and buffering. But I believe, uh, based on what I've heard the board talk about, that you're comfortable with what the applicants proposed to date. Um, I have noted um, in, in consultation with the board chair that there is, there will be a proposed condition about identifying certain trees that may remain in the back parking area. Um, so I think what we'll end up doing is striking this out of here and picking it up and 
new one. Architecture, outdoor storage. Okay. Uh, oh, nope. Uh, so the news on that is that staff is right next door. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So could, could I just ask a question about how how that uh, condition would be carried out or implemented? What? Uh, which one in terms of the it? one of identifying trees and the sure the way I have it written currently at the let's say prior to the start of construction the applicant shall coordinate with planning department staff on identifying trees to remain around the proposed parking lot expansion. Okay, thank you. And we have we have had that as a condition on mm -hmm. some other approvals, and it's it, in, at least to my knowledge, it's been a very I, no, I think that, informal yeah, process. Yeah, no, I think it, that I have no issue with that. I, I think to that's, make sure a, folks are paying that's a good way to go about it. I yep. think. Yeah. I guess the only other one that I want I think we want to strike from what staff or what board has before you is in terms of uh, is the board comfortable with the proposed. Um, Screening around the propane tank. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I think we're, then that goes we're fine with that. Thank you for keeping track of that. <laughs> Can you read that first? All right. <laughs> I may have to hop in for it. All right. I move to approve the application of VP Holdings LLC represented by Teradyne Consultants and Garin Turgeon Gar Architects under Chapter 405 Zoning Ordinance and Chapter 405B site plan review ordinance with the following findings and conditions. BP Holdings LLC proposes to redevelop property <coughs> located at 253 U.S. Route 1. The site is approximately eight-tenths of an acre and is located within the TVC2 zoning district. The applicant seeks to add on 1,100 square feet approximately to the existing structure and expand the parking field to include a total of 48 parking spaces and associated infrastructure improvements. The planning board has reviewed the application and supporting documentation and finds that the proposed design of the site plan adequately addresses the site plan review ordinance and zoning ordinance requirements for site utilization and layout, access, internal vehicular movement, pedestrian ways, landscaping, stormwater management, architecture, signage, utilities, and storage. Conditions. Number one, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall A, Provide revised plans to address comments and planning staff's memo related to internal vehicle circulation, pedestrian ways, delineated through the parking field transition area, signage, and plan notes. Provide a plan to address issues related to the snow storage and stormwater maintenance described in the town engineer's memo dated September 30, 2015. Plans to be reviewed and approved by the planning department. Number two, prior to the issuance of sign permit, the final sign design shall be reviewed and approved by, by, planning, by the planning department. The sign shall be designed as a monument sign and consistent with architectural detailing of the building. Number three, prior to start of construction, the applicant shall coordinate with the planning department staff on identifying trees to remain around the proposed parking lot expansion. Motion. Second. Could I, could I discuss um, for a discussion? I, I have a personal preference towards monument signs, mm -hmm. but I'd like to leave it up to the planning department. I don't know if I'm, you know, I don't know if I meant for it to be memorialized in the motion. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know there's a monument style. I'm just I'll leave signage up to planning, but to say that it has to be a monument style in the motion, I think it might be a little too descriptive. That's my opinion. I'll let you guys weigh in. We need to amend that. <coughs> it's 46 parking spaces, not 48. I don't know how you want to procedurally do that. Vote on, and then do the. With the adjustments they made tonight. No. Right. Cool. How do we vote on that? Make an amendment to the yeah, make an well, amendment to the motion. Uh, actually, yeah. if I might, uh, on the 48 spaces, uh, I'll. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Fine. I was just going to say on the 48 spaces, I guess the findings do state that the applicant seeks to add the 1,148 spaces. The condition below, because we haven't had these plans before us, sort of speaks to the modifications that will be made. Um, I guess it's, yeah. 
I think that, yeah. yeah. It doesn't uh, confuse the matter more than needed. Sort of the, the, that, that paragraph of the findings is more of sort of a okay. description of what the applicant right. proposed. Let's just vote on it then. Um, Good. Does anyone have any strong feelings about monument signage, whether we be that specific? I don't. Uh, I, no, I mean, I think, I think, my view anyway, is there's a, there's a wide uh, uh, variation that fits within that broad description of the monument sign. So I propose that we amend the condition to that the final sentence states, the sign shall be designed to be consistent with the building's architectural detailing. We've already stated that. And approved by the planning department. Right, that, the, that's that stated in the, previous, right. in the previous sentence. That already covers that. Okay. I think what also is, if I may, sure. I think what's important also is that the discussion we're having here tonight, the applicants here and the engineers are here, they, they know what we're really seeking. And uh, the planning department is represented here. So at the end of the day, it's going to come out the way we intended, I'm sure. I'm good with that language. Okay. So we have. Could, could you uh, repeat that to me, just so I. Like to, uh, I'll, read, I'll read the entire second condition. Okay. Perfect. Related to signage. Prior to the issuance of a sign permit, the final sign design shall be reviewed and approved by the planning department. The sign shall be designed to be consistent with the building's architectural detailing. Yeah, that's such, I think that's acceptable. One thing I, I want to sort of make clear to the board was it, it's the owner's uh, intent to do what he can to keep the existing posts. Uh, obviously, if a monument sign um, wouldn't allow that. <coughs> so I, I would, if, if we go to Jay with a proposal, a proposed sign that keeps the existing posts, um, I guess I just want I think to make it clear for Jay that right. he, that that's allowable as long as we've we've made an effort to sort of match the let, let me put Ben. I understand. First of all, from where I sit, we're pushing this ahead a lot faster. Okay, that's number one. Number two, one of the things that we've tried to do, and I think we've done it very successful, all up and down Route One, is not leave existing things. That when somebody comes in and wants to improve the area. We try to also improve every aspect of it within the limitations of what the application in, uh, entails. And uh, I'm going to stress that uh, it doesn't have to be that kind of design, but to leave it the way, just the way it is, is not acceptable to me. That it has to be something different. What that difference is, I defer to staff. But that has been our function over the last few years that I've sat on this board, and I'm very comfortable if we look up and down of what's happened in the last eight or nine years as opposed to what existed before. So I want to stress that to you. Yeah, I think that's understood, and, and certainly a, there will be a new sign. Obviously, the, the signage that exists today is for businesses that are no longer there. Um, the applicant's interest is just in keeping the existing posts, but certainly the design um, of the, the boards themselves will, will will try to meet the intent of, of what the board is, is looking for. And, and just to add to uh, hopefully not the confusion, is it, you, you, can, you can hide the post with, you know, you can build around there. I just think the post is skinny and, the, and the, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't seem to have any real balance to it. Um, so I'm just looking for something a little bit more. Understood. Yep. New England night. Sure. Unless. Um, I, I think we. Yeah. I think we we, we understand um, what the, what the board's wishes are. Right. Thanks for clarifying. Any further discussion? We have a an amended motion on the table. Second the amended motion. That has a second. Any further discussion? All in favor. Are we voting on the amendment? Yes, please. Amendment. Yes. We're we're voting amendment. on the amendment. All right. Okay. All right. The amendment no. passed. Now we, the amendment is passed. All in favor of the motion? That's unanimous. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you very much for working with us on that. Right, thank you.
collectors are in. Do we have a town planner's report? Uh, yes, I have a couple of items to report on. I uh, want to let planning board members know that on Wednesday, October 7th, there will be a workshop with the town council on the Higgins Beach rezoning uh, work that has been going on. Um, it's a workshop between staff and council, but it's certainly open to the public, and we thought it might be of interest to board members as well. Um, we do have a one-page handout, maybe a two-page handout, that uh, we will email to you either this evening or tomorrow morning so you can get caught up to speed on that item. I want to also let folks know that on October 20th at 6.30 here in Town Hall, that's 6.30 in the evening, there will be a, um, a community meeting on the Gore Road preliminary uh, design project. Uh, the town's looking to... Uh, redevelop, reconstruct Gorham Road, essentially from about Oak Hill intersection up to the Payne Road intersection. Hmm. And so it's a multi-year project, um, but we're beginning the preliminary design concepts. And so, uh, again, that meeting's on October 20th at 6.30 here in Town Hall. Um, also let board members know that uh, in conjunction with the Transportation Committee, and among other folks, staff has drafted a complete streets policy for the community to consider that will probably be brought to the council's attention at some point this winter when we have our, our new council on board. And, um, and so uh, I believe that has been provided to you already. And again, if that hasn't, we'll email that out. But I, I think I see copies here at the table. Um, so those are three items we want to report on this evening. Thank you. Do we have an administrative amendment report? Yes, I have one item to report on. Um, reconstruction of the Black Rocks Road down in the, um, down off the backside of Ferry Beach. Uh, it's, it's been approved by the planning board chair, staff in reviewing it. Uh, essentially, it's a, it's a small private road that accesses both the uh, Prouts Neck Golf Course and a, a three to a half dozen homes at the end of that spit of road that's um, um, being inundated with, with the uh, seawater. So they're going to reconstruct it and they're also going to um, uh, re-nourish the beach in front of the, in front of the, uh, in front of the road and do some, uh, uh, as I said, uh, some beach nourishment and dune restoration in the area in conjunction with that. It's been through uh, heaps of DEP and Army Corps review so um, that received its administrative approval. That is all I have for this meeting. Thank you. Any planning board correspondence? I will just note, Mr. Chair, that you did receive a letter from, uh, I believe, a Mr. and Mrs. Prey for the Fortune Estate subdivision. You should have all been provided a copy of that. Um, I know that item was tabled at tonight's meeting, but um, make you aware that that was provided. Thank you. Anything else? Any planning board comments? Yeah. Um, I just want to follow up with Jay. I, sorry, I missed the last uh, transportation committee. I had a back problem, so I didn't make it. But uh, you have in front of you, as Jay said, the proposed crosswalk marking policy and crosswalks. And uh, I, I advise you to, to read it. it. It was a lot of time and effort put into this. And uh, we're trying to come up with something that would be equitable for everybody but I hope to make the next meeting. Thanks, Ron. Anyone else? Roger? I just have a question about process. Um, on um, pro um, the Mercedes dealership, if I recall, when we approved that, there was supposed to be some landscaping mm -hmm. and another sign was going to go up. Um, where is, what's the status of all that? Uh, I mean, yes. it, look, it looks good what they've done right. so far. But there is definitely some more work to be done out on the site. They also haven't started their uh, car wash addition component to the site. So, um, yes, the site is looking. The parking field component to it is mostly done, but there are some details that have yet to be, uh, not haven't been finalized. So okay. we're staff still tracking those and working with the um, property manager on that. 
not really the time to plant <laughs> right now. So. And, and just one last question, and I don't know if this is the right form, but the um, the home at the corner of uh, Muzzy and Spring Street, <coughs> where it's been all cleared, is, is that for sale at home, or, or you don't know? I'm not sure. Okay. Roger, also in addition to what you were asking, I happen to know there's been a lot of administrative changes at, at the Mercedes place, so I don't know what impact that has had on the whole situation, but I, factually I know that to be true. Thank you. That's it. Uh, I just wanted to briefly note we're, believe it or not, down to just three meetings left this year after tonight. Um, and. With the uh, with a couple of us being lame ducks and uh, the anticipation of a couple of new members coming on board, um, I had conversation with staff and given some thought to um, the possibility of, if time allows, time and schedules allow, as we get toward the end of the year, potentially have uh, a workshop, um, which would in ideally include both incoming members and sitting members, including lame ducks to sort of talk about planning board process and, and protocol um, in terms of sort of, you know, what are the steps along the way, um, what are the different types of proposals that we see, um, maybe talk through some of the protocol for, for motions and things along those lines, things that maybe sometimes are taken a little bit for granted, but um, sometimes questions come up, and particularly with a little bit of turnover, I think it's always good to revisit those great things. Idea. Um, great idea. I'll be terming out and so there'll be a, be a new chair as well. Um, so give some thought to that. It, it's tricky timing wise because um, the new members member or members won't be um, won't be appointed until the, the new council has been elected and seated. So that leaves a pretty narrow window toward the end of the year and that's obviously a busy time for folks but just keep that in, in the backs of your minds, and um, maybe as we get a little further into the fall, we can try and try and pin a date down. So that's all I've got. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All, all in favor? Thank you. If we set up